Hi, good evening. Welcome to Mission 2016. My name is Josephine Frempong. Tonight on Mission, we'll take you through the journey of children with special needs and how inclusive education can cater for their needs. Our first story, despite her ability, Matilda Agbanyega will not let her condition be a barrier to achieving success in her endeavor. Diagnosed with cerebral palsy at six months, Matilda braved the odds to write this year's basic certificate examination, joining regular students in mainstream. Portia Gabo has the rest of the story. Okay. Her disability is not a barrier to her dreams of becoming a medical doctor. Matilda is living with a condition called cerebral palsy, this is the general term for a number of neurological conditions which affect movement and coordination. She only started mainstream school in her teens, joining regular pupils at the Manuel Presbyterian Basic School at Medina. With inclusive education, her lessons were tailored to meet her needs. Her mother, who wanted to remain anonymous, recounted challenges she had to overcome to enable Matilda access education. And we sent her to a special school, but the special school was not doing much to help her. Even as at now, when we are going somewhere and we are walking, sometimes somebody can just look at her and then hit her foot against something, or some people even fall into a gutter, because I don't know whether she's a strange being as Matilda takes a giant leap to greatness, she first has to contend with a staircase that is not disability friendly and a classroom environment with no aid for children with special needs. She braved the odds and joined over 251 candidates at the Medina Islamic Center to write the basic education certificate exams. Matilda is writing the mathematics paper a student with cerebral palsy may find it difficult to write fast and legibly. In order to assist her, the West African Examination Council granted her the permission to use a laptop for exams. We used to do group studies and then uh, where, where she can't learn, then we help her with the place she doesn't understand. Currently, WAYEK has a policy for special needs students which allows them to be given extra time during examinations. Unlike other students, Matilda has an extra 1 hour 30 minutes to complete the math paper. Despite the additional time given here, there were still some difficulties. <laughs> Matilda, how was the paper? It was a bit difficult. How does it feel to write the BC? It feels normal. But the arrangement was a bit not okay. The Bayek need to um, bring a computer, but they could not bring it. Who helped you with the computer? The computer is mine. The uh, sister who bought it for me. Because of uh, her condition, she couldn't write mathematics. Because there is no any software that can help her. Uh, identify the diagrams and then symbols that can help and work out all the other things. Why I think they have to put certain things in place. Once they are talking about inclusive, we need to put everything together that everybody will benefit. The 2010 Population and Housing Census puts the population of severely disabled persons at 3%, that is 737,743 persons. Out of this figure, 1.4% of children between the ages of 0 to 9 years were males, while 1.3% were females. A number of persons living with disability are not in school, some due to lack of disability-friendly facilities. In order to realize the goal of inclusive education, pupils with special needs should be considered as critical. It is only through inclusive education that children with special needs can survive the storms of life. I would advise parents to take their walks to school. 
In May this year, government launched a national inclusive education policy framework to address educational challenges encountered by children with special needs. The country representative of UNICEF in Ghana, Susan Ngogi, says the implementation of inclusive education policy is crucial to promoting equity in education. The principle of inclusive education was adopted at the Salamanca World Conference on Special Education held in Spain in 1994. In May this year, government launched a national inclusive education policy framework to address the educational challenges encountered by children with special needs. The Disability Act, Act 715, tags the Minister of Education to, by legislative instruments, designate schools or institutions in each region which shall provide the necessary facilities and equipment that will enable persons with disability to fully benefit from the school. Ten years after the passage of the Act, some children with special needs are unable to access education in the country. Globally, there are a lot of people who suffer from some disability. It's about 15%. I think there was some um, World Disability Report that was done in 2011 that showed about 1 billion people suffer from a disability. And if you think about it, that's just a lot of people who are not included in the mainstream of things. People who suffer from disability tend to be excluded from our normal um, ways of life, um, opportunities such as education, employment opportunities, and it's a huge loss. To rectify the challenge, government in 2015 completed the development of an inclusive education policy with the support of the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF. The policy defines the strategic path of government for the education of all children with special educational needs. Schools will also accommodate all children, regardless of their physical, intellectual, social, emotional, linguistic or other conditions. Currently being implemented in 1,322 schools in 20 districts across seven regions in the country, children with mild and moderate forms of disability are being considered with a long-term goal of including children with all forms of disability. We're sensitizing parents, um, the district assembly assemblies, uh, NGOs within the community, queen mothers, uh, chiefs, we're sensitizing them to enable them, you know, appreciate and accept children with disabilities. Family would also understand the issues and participate and support the implementation of the plan because this, this time around they're not going to hide the children in the, in, the, in the rooms, they'll bring them out, mainstream them in school and then I'm looking at it from the society because now the individual, the families are well uh, vested in you know some of the issues around inclusive education and special needs both inclusion and everybody will contribute towards the development of the nation in the inclusive education policy framework the national curricula for basic and second cycle institutions will be reviewed to meet the needs of all learners according to the unicef representative in ghana the implementation of inclusive education would be crucial in achieving the sustainable development goals there's the need for society opinion leaders and all to ensure the successful implementation of the inclusive education policy on Mission 2016, we provide a platform for marginalized voices. Join us next week, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Many thanks for watching. My name is Josephine Frempon. Good evening.